This video was sponsored by the Magic Candle Company. Use offer code OFFHAND15 for 15% off your order and stay tuned until the end of the video to find out how the Disney elite clean their hands. Wait, wait, what is that even supposed to mean? You know, for a company that likes to avoid real-world topics and discussion, there sure are a lot of references to real-world religions in the Disney parks. And even as I say that, a few examples probably pop right into your head. Mr. Toad, Spaceship Earth, and even the Haunted Mansion. We've talked about that before on the podcast. For something that envelops so much of our culture to be absent in the Disney parks would be a little weird. Religion is a massive part of human history, and Spaceship Earth is a retelling of human history. I mean, it just sort of makes sense. Where can we find these examples of religion in the Disney parks? Why are they there? Do we really need confirmation that hell itself exists and we probably will be sent there while we ride Mr. Toad's Wild Ride in the happiest place on Earth? You know, that's debatable. Today we're going to talk about religions, namely Christianity, but there's a few others in there in the Disney parks. What attractions they pop up in, and what story or lore implications that has on the attraction itself. Like, does heaven exist in the Haunted Mansion universe? Why aren't the spirits going there? We're going to answer all of these questions and more, so join me as we discuss religion in the Disney parks. You know, I feel like it's fair to start this conversation at the very beginning back when Disneyland opened with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. A very, very obvious inclusion of the mainstream Christian religion that has become very popular, sort of a cult following behind this ride over the years. For those of you who are unaware, the plot of the attraction is that you are going on this wild ride along with Mr. Toad around London before being sentenced guilty for, you know, causing general mayhem, destruction, and disturbing the peace, and on your way to prison, you get hit by a train and are sent to the underworld. Now the story of the ride differs wildly from The Wind in the Willows, the cartoon that the attraction was based on. Yes, Toad does go on his wild ride, and yes, he is arrested, but it doesn't end with his death. It ends instead with him clearing his name and returning to Toad Hall. Now yes, we do return to Toad Hall at the end of the attraction, but we don't exactly get to clear our names. Why are these two so different? It's actually not widely known why the two endings are so dissimilar. My guess is it came down to the amount of time the attraction gave them versus the amount of time they had making the cartoon. When Mr. Toad opened with the rest of Disneyland in 1955, it was the shortest duration of all the Fantasyland Dark Rides, just over a minute and a half at 98 seconds. Now sure, you can be sentenced as guilty and sent to the Tower of London, await your sentencing, and then try to clear your name, or you could die, go to hell, and leave. The second idea was, for one, easier to do with the shorter track that they had to work with, and two, it let the wed Imagineers flex their creative muscles when it came to designing this terrible, horrifying hellscape. And by terrifying, I mean warm, and silly. I mean, and I mean it, it's warm. Next time you ride Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, pay attention to the temperature as you enter hell. You'll notice it gets a lot warmer than the rest of the attraction. Here we see multiple representations of devils or demons. The judge appears again as the devil, and a dragon appears just as we exit the scene. Which, believe it or not, actually does appear in the Bible. Dragons exist biblically. They're in there. And this one likes to breathe a little puff of fire at us as we exit his domain. Elsewhere in Fantasyland, we do see depictions of churches, namely, we fly over one in Peter Pan's flight, and there is one present in the Alice in Wonderland scene of the Storybook Land Canal Boats. More references, though, appeared in 1967 with the grand opening of Pirates of the Caribbean in New Orleans Square, where, as we pass the treasure room scene with the skeleton sitting on his pile of hoarded gold, we pass by many, many different religious relics that happen to be part of that lost treasure or I suppose it's cursed treasure. We see hidden amongst all the scattered gold and treasure chests, a big, and I mean it, it's pretty big, menorah. But this isn't just any old holiday menorah, no, no, no. I believe this one has some special lore behind it. See, this is cursed lost treasure, right? I mean, for sure, you can't find it without dying as a skeleton on top of it, that's fair. What is the significance of this menorah? What makes it so valuable? Now back in this really old book that's called the Old Testament, which is why it's got the word old before it, there existed a place called the Tabernacle, which is where they kept all of the holy relics pertaining to God and angels and, you know, all those guys up there. Included in the Tabernacle's treasure stash, we had the Ark of the Covenant, who you may know from the Indiana Jones series of movies, and, of course, the menorah that was eventually pillaged by the Babylonians and brought back to Babylon, so that's gone. Eventually, they got around to building a second temple that was pillaged at some point, again, by the Romans. 
There is even a depiction of the Romans stealing the menorah on the Arch of Titus in, yeah, Rome. And would you look at that? That is a dead ringer for the menorah we find inside Pirates of the Caribbean. So eventually, over all those years, originally from Israel, then to Rome, then all the way across the ocean to the New World, to Isla Tesoro, which is where Pirates of the Caribbean takes place, and then eventually to Dead Man's Grotto, which is the name of the caves that we sail through at the very beginning. Not the very beginning, that's the bayou, toward the middle. And that's just the largest and most prominent one. We also see on one of the relics a depiction of Yggdrasil, the cosmic tree from Norse mythology, and a couple of Aztec and Mayan gold idols. Later on in the ride, when Red is trying to get the auctioneer to sell off all of the rum to the other pirates, we see a large bust of the god Apollo amongst all of the other items being sold. Now because this attraction deals with pirates and secret treasure, most of the items in that treasure are going to be from early antiquity, or in some cases, even earlier. It just lends that more mysterious air around the treasure. All of these forbidden items that have been lost to history, finally found by the pirates, except they're either being auctioned off or they're too dead to get them or sell them. Trust me, buddy, we've all been there. Yeah. Two years later, a groundbreaking new attraction would open right across the street from Pirates of the Caribbean, also in New Orleans Square, my favorite, the Haunted Mansion. Now, before we even get started going through this attraction, the existence of ghosts you know, in the first place already confirms the existence of an afterlife. So that's canon now, I guess. Now I think you can tell as you ride the Haunted Mansion, Imagineers wanted to avoid telling a specific story about a specific religion's afterlife. I mean, come on, they already did that with Mr. Toad. Instead, it's more of just a very generic, ghosts are hanging out in this house and they want you to hang out with them too, which is understandable. I mean, I like hanging out with ghosts. I mean, I would like hanging out with ghosts, I've never actually met one. And so as you ride through the house, you don't really see any depictions of Christian crosses or anything like that, except for the Haunted Mansion in Orlando, where you see above the door on the tallest tower of the mansion, a cross carved. Fifi, the dog who's buried outside of the Disneyland mansion, her tombstone is also shaped like a cross, just made out of dog bones. In the changing portrait hallway, we have a picture of Medusa, who was of course a figure in Greek mythology, which was the religion of the ancient Greeks. So I think she counts, even though she's scary. But the graveyard is when things really start to get interesting because we see different types of mausoleums, and we'll get to my favorite ghost in a second, but we see depictions, albeit very scary and unnerving ones, of angels on some of the tombstones. No biblically accurate ones though as far as I can see, what a shame, add one of those to the right if you really want to break people's minds, literally. We also see a very, very large number of mausoleums, most of which are modeled on real mausoleums at New Orleans St. Louis Cemetery Number 1, which is actually found, like I said, in New Orleans and not St. Louis. It's a confusing name, I know. One mausoleum is a bit different though, and that is the one belonging to the mummy, the best ghost in the Haunted Mansion because he's mumbling and can't be heard by the old man. If you don't know the lore behind that, it's, it's out there. Search offhand Disney mummy, I'm sure I explain it somewhere. We see the mummy in front of his burial place, a mausoleum modeled after an ancient Egyptian temple, and right outside of it, a sarcophagus modeled on that of King Tut. Now these ancient Egyptian sarcophagi, thank you, were usually made out of wood, stone, or in some cases gold and other precious metals. This one, I don't know, it's either wooden or plaster, but the, the one it's based off of was gold. Ancient Egyptian mummies were of course embalmed in a very fun process that involved hooks up the nose to pull out your brains and other organs. Before being wrapped in that iconic linen cloth and then stowed away for centuries before some Victorians found him, brought him over the ocean to New Orleans, reinterred him, and uh, eventually he comes back for a party. But because I'm assuming he was embalmed so well, they took his tongue, so you know, he's, he's mumbling the whole time. Best ghost in the mansion. I don't, I don't care, I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. This is really the only example of other culture's burial practices we see in the Haunted Mansion. Sorry, no Tibetan sky burial here. Word to the wise, don't look that up. Just a mummy, an old man, and a dog. The three boys just hanging out for all of eternity in the graveyard. Moving ahead, of course, to Epcot, and my favorite attraction, well, second favorite attraction there, Spaceship Earth. Now you can't really tell a story about communication through all of human history without sort of bringing religion into it a little bit. It was such a large part of people's lives, back especially during the Renaissance in Italy. It was very pronounced there. You know, Michelangelo, the guy who painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, you can see him right there, painting God and Adam. All while in the background hearing a choir sing hallelujah over 
and over again. No, not the song from Shrek, just the word hallelujah over and over again. Side note, this is one of my favorite scenes in all of Spaceship Earth because it really makes you feel like you're up in the rafters in this massive cathedral right up there next to Michelangelo. But we need to go back for a second to the very beginning of the Renaissance scene in Spaceship Earth because it shows just how important all of these scholars and inventions were to help keep written history going after the fall of Rome, symbolized in this ride by the Library of Alexandria and that beautiful, amazing smell of Rome burning. Even though it wasn't in Rome, actually, the, the library was in Egypt, but Egypt was part of the Roman Empire at that point. But now we're just getting into semantics. The ones responsible for copying text to other books by hand were, of course, monks. Moving down the line, in 1450, Johann Gutenberg invented the movable type printing press, and the first book widely printed on the machine was, yes, you guessed it, it was like the MCU back in those days. Everyone was obsessed with it. The Bible. Dame Judi Dench also talks about, It turns out there are copies of some of these books in the libraries of the Middle East, being watched over by Arab and Jewish scholars. Call it the first backup system. Which goes to say that not all is lost from the burning of the library. And it's around this time that the Muslim and Jewish communities become the front runners in philosophy, mathematics, and technology. But that's enough about Spaceship Earth because the rest of it has to do with the Civil War and then Steve Jobs and then you design your own future. And those, those are all kind of boring to me. Let's talk about Animal Kingdom. Now we don't see too many spiritual practices in Animal Kingdom unless we go to one of the coolest rides at the park, literally and figuratively, Expedition Everest. And like I said, the queue showcases Tibetan and Nepalese culture. It's amazing. I, I highly recommend going through the queue, waiting in line, and look at the Yeti poop. Look at the size of that thing. Oh my goodness but you also circle through different altars and go through a shrine during the lift hill sequence when you're going up to the mountain. The shrine, while being sort of a-religious in the context of the rite itself, is modeled after Buddhist temples. Although this one is dedicated to the fearsome, giant, immobile, and disco yeti we encounter later on in the attraction. Now we can altogether sort of ignore Hollywood Studios because Hollywood is a land of sinners and, I, I guess, uh, Star Wars. Unless you want to go for the super deep cuts of things like uh, Carthay Circle being a Spanish colonial revival architecture style based on the Spanish colonial style, which was lots of churches in Spain and the New World. But this isn't an architecture video. Before I leave you today, I want to talk about one very special attraction that was changed from its United States counterparts because of spiritual beliefs of the people who live there. And of course, I'm talking about Hong Kong Disneyland's Mystic Manor. Now, of course, when Disney was building Hong Kong Disneyland, they realized they couldn't do a haunted mansion the same way that they had done in all of the other parks over the years in Japan, Orlando, Anaheim, and Paris. Because, like we established earlier in this video, the whole point of the Haunted Mansion is there are ghosts running around partying and having fun swinging from the chandeliers, floating around, sometimes drinking. Where does the wine go? But here's the thing, this would be considered extremely disrespectful in Chinese culture. And the ride has zero references to departed spirits or ghosts or the afterlife. All of the objects in the house just sort of become enchanted through magic and come to life. That's not to say there aren't any references to the haunted mansion in there though. Medusa, she, she shows up. Uh, the singing busts are in there, except they're not busts, they're suits of armor. And while not directly Hmm? Related to the Haunted Mansion, Mystic Manor does have its own tiki room. Not tiki room, but tiki room. And I find it super respectable. Since Disney couldn't put any happy haunts in Hong Kong, they decided to just go all out and make a trackless ride that just absolutely blows my mind every time I watch a ride through of it. And of course, when Shanghai opened, there there was nothing there. There's, there's no Haunted Mansion equivalent in Shanghai. Yet! Yet. They hold the Candlelight Processional at Disneyland and at Epcot every single year, sometimes hosted by Thor, most of the time hosted by Neil Patrick Harris. And there are so many more references. You go through a Cambodian temple in the Jungle Cruise, one of the coolest and most quiet parts of the ride. Sorry to my Anaheim friends, though this is an Orlando exclusive. You can see lots of examples of Louisiana voodoo in New Orleans Square and the Haunted Mansion. At the end of the day, the Disney parks are all-encompassing. They cover so many different cultures from so many different parts of the world in all of their parks all around the world. From Asian and African culture in Animal Kingdom, to Western European and North African at Epcot, and of course American on Main Street USA. But Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Disney Sea, they're all meant to be escapist. You're meant to be transported into a different world when you walk underneath those railroad tracks. One that's rooted in ours, but is distinctly different. The cultures and beliefs of people will carry over into that magical realm too. Both the mysterious ancient religions of classical antiquity, or ones that are still practiced today around the globe. 
I think Disney does it tastefully, which is what I also tried to do with this video, is do it all tastefully. And we are going to end this video on one of my favorite attractions at the Magic Kingdom in Orlando. An attraction where you wouldn't expect to find a reference to religion, but there remains one nonetheless. No, we're not on Main Street or Liberty Square, we're instead going to Tomorrowland to the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. Specifically, there is one point of the People Mover where you pass by part of the old Epcot miniature. A scale model of Walt Disney's ideal experimental prototype community of tomorrow, before it became the theme park next door, before you could visit Anna and Elsa and ride Test Track, instead you would be able to work, live, play, and yes, go to church at Epcot. As you ride past the model, look toward the back right, past the people mover, and you may see three spires leading up to a white cross, indicating a church at Epcot. Although a very futuristic one, because like I said, it's a city of tomorrow. Now if only we could see the rest of this model, if you didn't know, they chopped it up and the rest is probably somewhere in storage or in a dumpster. Are the Disney parks an accurate representation of religion around the world? Probably not. The Disney parks by design sanitize everything and make it palatable, but you also get to die and visit hell and Mr. Toad, so I mean, I don't know, that's pretty metal. But man, all this talk about the burning library of Alexandria has me wondering what it would smell like. Is that weird? Yes, but also here, if you want to know what the loss of a thousand years of civilization smells like, it smells like... Wood? Smell for yourself at themagiccandlecompany.com and make sure to use offer code OFFHAND15 for 15% off your purchase. And it's not just candles, don't worry. They have wax melts, they have hand sprays, they have bath bombs. If you're crazy and you don't want your office to smell like burning timbers, you can also get scents like Haunted or Tiki Terrace if you're a tiki boy or a ghost boy. Sometimes I'm a bit of both, so you light them together and they make for a really spooky yet relaxing island scent. But we haven't even scratched the surface as to the amount of scents that the Magic Candle company offers. Be sure to visit the link in the description down below and thank you to the Magic Candle Company for sponsoring this video. All I know is I need to get my hands on one of those little rubber devils from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I mean look at him, he's adorable. And he's only... oh, never mind. Hello everybody and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Offhand Disney about religion in the Disney parks. Like I said, I hope I did it tastefully enough. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please, please hit the like button so I know that you guys enjoyed it. And if you're new around here and like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. You're always welcome around here. A massive thank you to all of my supporters over at Patreon.com. You can also find the link for that in the description down below. Even just $1 a month will get you access to most of the perks and you help keep the channel going and get credited at the end of every month so that's something to look forward to be sure to follow me over on twitter instagram and tiktok at offhand disney on all of those places and check out the foolish mortals podcast starring myself and disney dan for the new year we got a lot of new stuff planned i got video ideas already just i'm, I'm working away and uh, d23 is also this year so we'll see if uh, i'll see any of you there i might go unless they're live streaming all the panels in which case i won't go save the money and live stream it here for you guys to watch with me all of that though remains to be seen we'll we'll just we'll see what happens all right if, if you made it to the end of the video comment uh rome burning because that seemed to be like the overarching topic of this video if you think about it, it was just rome on fire S set on fire thank you all again so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video yes it's going to be about those figment popcorn buckets <laughs> goodbye